the Eel River, one of the great Pacific salmon rivers of the world, with hundreds of miles of low gradient channels that were ideal for salmon and steelhead spawning and rearing before landscape disturbance. Stratified pools 50 to 75 feet deep held cold water at depth, ideal for these fish throughout the year. In combination, there were likely a million Pacific salmon of different species returning to the eel before European contact. The new settlers harvested hundreds of thousands of fall Chinook salmon until the stock collapsed from overfishing in the 1880s. Historically, the lower eel was 40 to 50 feet deep and 100 to 150 feet across at the present location of Fernbridge. The 1955 and 64 floods, however, profoundly transformed the river, filling it with sediment more than 40 to 60 feet deep in places and changed it from a river of continuous pools to shallow riffles, wide and warm. By the 1990s, the system was so ecologically stressed, after prolonged drought, eel Pacific salmon species seemed headed for extinction. But the Eel River Recovery Project has discovered that the famous Eel River Fall Chinook are in fact not going extinct, but are showing signs of resilience. Come with me as we explore what we've discovered about these magnificent fish and their status and trends from 2012 to 2017. Some male Chinook salmon may return from the ocean after feeding for less than a year, and they're called jacks. The percentage of jack salmon in any year can be indicative of juvenile survival in the previous year. Most Chinook salmon juveniles emerge from the gravel in the months of January through March and begin migrating downstream immediately. This species has a competitive advantage over steelhead and coho salmon because, for the most part, Chinook juveniles don't need healthy freshwater habitat during summer. The estuary is an extremely important environment for Chinook, though as they feed there for several months before going to the ocean. The eel estuary is in recovery from past flood events and undergoing active restoration in the Salt River Slough, which is likely increasing Chinook salmon juvenile survival and helping the population's resilience. Eel River adult Chinook salmon feed along the continental shelf from the mouth of the Columbia River south to Monterey Bay for one to five years. Older maturing fish can attain a size of more than 70 pounds. In 2010, Dr. Peter Moyle and Ron Yoshiyama of the University of California, Davis, published a paper stating that Eel River Fall Chinook salmon had plummeted to extremely low levels and were on the verge of extinction. Following a series of community meetings in 2011, the Eel River Recovery Project was formed in part in response to this perceived fish crisis. People throughout the basin wanted to be reassured that the Chinook were not going extinct. The Recovery Project came together as a sponsored group of the Trees Foundation in 2012 and helped citizens to gauge scientifically the health of the Eel River and to work together to bring the human community within the watershed into harmony with nature in order to facilitate ecological restoration. The Recovery Project has developed three areas of focused inquiry, assessing fall Chinook salmon, monitoring flow and temperature throughout the watershed, and getting a handle on toxic cyanobacteria. The Eel River Recovery Project focused on fall Chinook salmon as was requested by the community and in 2012 we began to use citizen monitoring to assess the run throughout the basin. The recovery project began by doing lower Eel River dives to count Chinook salmon and we were joined by enthusiasts like surfers and abalone divers who were paired up with trained fish biologists to count the salmon. When dives began in 2012, there were six pools from Fortuna to Fernbridge that were suitable for monitoring. Pools at the mouth of the Van Dusen River and further upstream at Weymouth Bluff were also censused as secondary survey targets when there was sufficient divers recruited. Before dives each year, pool depths and contours are measured to understand where fish might be holding, which helps dive teams plan their approach. Divers form a line and move downstream in a synchronized swim. Only fish that swim past the team in an upstream direction are counted. And while the counts are comparable from year to year, they may underrepresent the total number of fish there because divers only see fish on the surface and fish schools may be several fish deep. The dive team tallies results with a scorekeeper after each pool to get the most accurate count possible. Once rains come, 
and the fish disperse, Eel River Recovery Project volunteers relay observations about Chinook salmon migration and spawning from bridges or other vantage points throughout the watershed, sometimes recording video or taking photos that are useful in documenting runs. The hardiest of Eel River Recovery Project volunteers help with spawner surveys and tributaries. Avid sport anglers report their catch to the recovery project, which is another way to track fish runs in progress. When the drought hit hard in 2013, guide Eric Stockwell joined the recovery project as a volunteer and added a whole nother dimension, tracking spawners in kayaks. When dives became infeasible as the drought continued in 2015, Eric and volunteers he trained began to stand up on kayaks and paddle boards to count fish in the lower Eel River and have captured accurate estimates of Chinook salmon in shallow pools annually since. In 2016, the recovery project added yet another dimension, and that is the use of drones to capture photos of the fish in lower Eel River pools. This tool is likely to become increasingly utilized as it allows us to estimate the numbers of fish without stress or disturbance. We didn't realize when we began the Fall Chinook Count in fall of 2012 what an extraordinary year we were about to document. While doing early reconnaissance, I found Fall Chinook stacked at the lip of the 12th Street Pool in Fortuna, waiting for rain. Silverfish had recently migrated from the ocean, while the more colored fish had been in fresh water longer. It was a harbinger for some amazing fish dives. The first dive on October 11th had a team of 15 divers that counted 1,827 Chinook salmon in six lower Eel River pools. Key volunteers came from a Humboldt State University dive class and the Weot Tribe's Natural Resources Department. Two weeks later, a smaller dive team counted over 5,000 Chinook salmon, again in the same six pools in Fortuna. Come with me on my reconnaissance solo dive at the pool at the mouth of the Van Dusen River on October 29, 2012. Dropping into the riffle at the top of the pool, I was astonished as I swam through waves of Chinook. Sometimes they swim forward past me, and other times they begin to drop back, kicking up algae as a defense and diversionary tactic to foil predators. In the back of the pool, they drew together in one solid ball of fish. Then the rains came, and volunteers began to witness mass migrations of Chinook salmon throughout the watershed. Schools of 100 to 150 an hour passed Alder Point for a day and a half twice in 2012. Volunteer Jeff Wells got really creative and glued a GoPro camera to a rock on the South Fork Eel near Benbow. He documented Chinook salmon spawning beginning around November 10, and they spawned extensively in the main channel of the South Fork from there to the headwaters. As the female digs her nest, the excessive amount of fine sediment that is in the stream bed is apparent.
Spawners were wall to wall on the main stem eel at Hearst. And just upstream at Emmendal on the upper eel river. And spawner density was high in tributaries of Outlet Creek above Willets. This is spawning fish in Bechtel Creek. You can see the males ramming each other and the females turning on her side to dig the red. Wild America above the town of Willets in the upper Eel River. After November 30, high water conditions did not allow assessment of late tributary spawning, but a major index of the 2012 abundance was the record 3,461 Chinook that passed upstream of the Van Artsdale Fish Station, 140 miles upstream from the mouth of the Eel River. Scott Harris of the California Department of Fish and Wildlife measured each fish and marked them with a fin clip, and then passed them upstream to allow them to spawn in the 12-mile reach between Potter Valley Project dams on the Upper Eel River. The 2012 record count included 754 fish in a single day. Fish handling was replaced with video recording in 2017. And they measure them. Beautiful fish, ready to spawn. Jack 55. Jack 55, so that's a smaller one. It's about a 25% jack component this year, and that's good, because we'll probably get lots of fish next year. Scott's got a couple three in the net here. Another tail clip. This one's bigger. I'm likely to get baptized here. And she's not quite ready to go. Actually, it's a big, broad male. It's got kind of a red color. Gorgeous fish. Scott's very gentle with these guys. He's a very professional fish handler. This guy's gonna go on the measuring board now. Reluctantly, but eventually. Oh yeah. Male 86. Male 86 centimeters. That's uh, well over 36 inches in length. And now it gets to go upstream and spawn. In total, we estimated that 20 to 50,000 Chinook salmon spawned in the Eel River in the 2012-2013 spawning year, the equivalent to counts conducted by the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service from 1955 to 58. This was extremely good news and confirmed that the population was not facing extinction, but instead rebounding. The 2013-2014 fall Chinook assessment coincided with the onset of what was to be a prolonged drought that required us to employ new tactics to track and estimate the Chinook salmon run. The fish were able to enter pools above Fernbridge with September rains, and the first dive showed signs of promise with nearly 2,000 fish counted on October 12. The count rose to 4,244 Chinook salmon on the 27th, so the Chinook salmon run was starting strong. On the 9th of November, 2013, Recovery Project volunteers counted a record 5,954 fish, the highest count of our five-year project. But then the rains failed. This magnificent run of fish could not reach the headwaters. The river dropped too low to migrate, and we thought sure the run was in peril, not being able to get upstream to spawn. Instead, after November 7th, Chinook salmon began spawning everywhere in all the main channels of the Lower Eel River, including the South Fork and the Van Dusen Rivers. Female salmon dig their nest by turning on their side and flexing their tail. They then move upstream and fan their tail again after the eggs are fertilized, covering the eggs with clean gravel. Sites with appropriate hardball and softball-sized gravel were heavily used throughout the Lower Eel River Basin, like this location in Piercy, where I first tried to get video of salmon spawning underwater. I moved upstream below a group of spawning fish, keeping low so as not to disturb them. I could see a huge male next to a large female, 
and you can see the aggressive action he takes to try to be the one to fertilize the eggs. And so the smaller jack to the left and smaller males to my right are constantly moving and jockeying as I hung there and video documented this amazingly beautiful sight. Two days later, I was on the lower south fork below Weon. There was not much spawning action as David Softjes and I floated towards Dyerville. Fine sediment filled the pools and spilled into the spawning areas, and the Chinook were opting to move further upstream and spawn elsewhere. But later on the same day, spawning action was fast and furious on the lower main eel below Dyerville as Sunshine Johnson joined the boating party. A riffle downstream of High Rock was loaded with spawners as I dove in the afternoon of November 29th. The water clarity was perfect as I moved closer to a beautiful pair of spawning Chinook salmon from the side. As I moved closer to get the perfect picture, the male moved between me and the female and then charged. I stuck my hand out to keep the big fish from ramming me. And he bit me, much to my surprise. On December 2nd, I dropped in to see if Chinook salmon were spawning in the riffle immediately above the middle fork. An increased flow release from Potter Valley on December 1 had moved some fish upstream of Dos Rios and they were actively spawning. There was dramatic lighting, magnificent specimens, and once again as I moved in from the side for a perfect shot, here come the male. I turned my camera onto video and held still. This time he didn't bite. Then things got even more interesting. It snowed a foot on December 6th while I was visiting Covalo. The main Ale River was stunning in the morning light. The middle fork was clear as gin as it joined the main Ale. Shadows, reflections, and brilliant winter light. But the cold had unexpected impacts on salmon. While the fish were visible from off the Eight Mile Bridge, holding in the pool at the mouth of Outlet Creek, they had ceased to spawn in the riffle below the pool because water temperatures were below 42 degrees, which will kill unhardened salmon eggs. Other streams were also being impacted by severe cold. Outlet Creek was beautiful, but it was beginning to freeze over, which can really be hard on fish life. Other headwater tributaries like Ten Mile Creek at the Black Oak Ranch began to freeze. Even the surface of pools in the upper South Fork at the Angelo Reserve froze, indicating similar adverse conditions for salmon spawning there. To confirm the impact of the cold on salmon, the Recovery Project conducted a mid-December survey of the Maniel River at Hearst, east of Willits. Eel River Recovery Project volunteer Greg Byers had been watching the salmon since the cold snap began, and they weren't spawning. Our survey confirmed the presence of reds that had been built earlier, but no sign of active spawning. Instead, we could see the school of Chinook salmon sitting almost motionless under the white bridge at Hearst. Their body temperature was the same as the water, 39 degrees Fahrenheit, and they were in a torpor waiting for temperatures to rise so they could spawn. We usually worry about water temperatures being too warm for salmon, but in the winter of 2013 and 2014, they got too cold and likely limited spawning success and recruitment in the upper Eel River. But Eel River reaches at lower elevation were not too cold and waves of Chinook salmon spawned actively through January. 
Eric Stockwell alerted us to major spawning activity, and we decided to float from Alder Point to Fort Seward on the main eel. We mapped reds everywhere in the main eel above and below the town of Alder Point. Every riffle crest had reds, and many had active spawners on them. Three miles downstream of Alder Point, we passed the mouth of Steelhead Creek. Then we came to a pool just downstream that took my breath away. Approaching 50 feet in depth, you could see the bottom. The way pools were historically along the entire length of the river, it felt like traveling back in time. A few river bends later, there was Eric Stockwell, and he doubled back with us as we continued the spawning survey downstream to Fort Seward. Eric had seen an adult sturgeon on his way upstream, and we relocated it. The fish was slim, indicating it probably got stuck after spawning as it was waiting for better flows for its ride back to the ocean. Areas with appropriate spawning gravels were heavily used as we approached Fort Seward. The variety of salmon carcasses seen during the course of the day told a story. Salmon die after spawning and leave a huge food store of nutrients that feed the stream where their young will be born. We saw ones just expired and in every state of decay. Nothing is wasted in nature. We saw four bald eagles, two gold eagles, and osprey dining along the way. The salmon watching party continued in the L'Oreal River as new waves of fish pushed upstream and continued to spawn in areas occupied since early November. The day after Christmas 2013, volunteers floated from McCann to Dyerville to check it for more spawners, and we weren't disappointed. We counted salmon nests of reds everywhere, on almost every riffle crest, with actively spawning fish. As the day warmed up, I decided to get underwater and get some video. Salmon have great peripheral vision, but they can't see what's immediately behind them. This female Chinook had spawned, as her white tail indicates, and she will stay over the nest and keep other fish from spawning there until she expires. Since Chinook only lived to a maximum of 24 days after spawning, this was the second or third wave of 2013-2014 spawning fish. We were able to count holding schools of fresh salmon in the deep pools in the crystal clear waters. Eric Stockwell measured carcasses as well, and the length of a Chinook salmon carcass can be related to their age, so data can be used to characterize the demographics of runs. There were lots of large fish in the 2013-14 run, which were likely four or five-year-old Chinook. We weren't partying on New Year's Eve. The recovery project instead was with Eric Stockwell and Sunshine Johnson, and we floated from Dyerville to Holmes. Amazing beauty in the bright winter light. Active Chinook spawning was still happening on almost every riffle with appropriate sized gravel from Dyerville to Holmes. I decided to go underwater at an active spawning riffle near Redcrest. As I entered the crystal clear, chilly waters, there was a pair of Chinook. I eased in closer, and then they began to spawn. The lighting was absolutely stunning. I was amazed as I floated over nest after nest with late fall Chinook females still on them. Continuous reds for longer than a football field. But fish watching still wasn't over. It still hadn't rained by January 22nd, and I found myself at the mouth of Outlet Creek. The gene clear water was 42 degrees, but I couldn't resist going in. I never wear gloves so I can work my camera underwater, and when I took the plunge, I thought briefly about how long I could stay in the water without getting hypothermia. Then I saw something that took my mind off the cold, a rare interior Eel River Basin coho salmon. 
Among the giant Chinook salmon waiting for warmer waters to spawn, there were coho intermixed, comprising about half of the three dozen fish holding. And Scott Harris of the California Department of Fish and Wildlife confirmed that these coho spawned in the headwaters of Outlet Creek above Willits in subsequent rains in February. During repeated January recovery project surveys at the lower eel, spawning continued and was recorded. With rains finally in the forecast, I couldn't resist jumping into the riffle in the front of the Van Dusen Convergence Pool to see how many and what kind of salmon and steelhead were holding. Adult salmon were still spawning, and there were a number of adult steelhead, and it's a very rare opportunity to film these fish in the winter. Although tributary spawning had been light in the early season, Chinook salmon were seen spawning in February and even into March in Bull Creek, which is rare and shows that these fish have the ability to adapt to drought. The extraordinarily dry conditions of 2013-14 allowed us to understand the diversity of run timing and the ability of fall Chinook salmon to cope with drought. We estimated that between 15 and 30,000 fish spawn in the Eel River, and since flows were modest after spawning, it's likely that egg and aliment survival were high, even though many of the eggs were laid in the main river bed in that year. Historically, fall Chinook salmon entered the Eel River in large numbers around August 25th, but in 2014, they would have needed tennis shoes. The entire Eel River flow at Scotia had dropped to less than 25 cubic feet per second in late August, and the river was beginning to stagnate. The Eel River Recovery Project did a reconnaissance flight on August 29th, and we discovered that the river was dry in Fortuna. Disconnected between the 12th Street Pool and Fernbridge for the first time ever. A problem for the 2014-2015 run was that previous low flow years had allowed pools to fill, so now there were fewer places for the salmon to hold, and the riffles were shallower and more challenging for them to migrate upstream. Instead of having six pools suitable for salmon dives, only three were deep enough. Luckily, the rain in the third week of September increased flows to 200 cubic feet per second, washed away algae, and allowed Chinook salmon to enter the river as far upstream as the 12th Street Pool in Fortuna. On October 11th, the Recovery Project dive team counted 2,467 Chinook salmon, which was the highest early October count of the three years of surveying to that point. But the rains came within days, and no more lower river dives were feasible as the first wave of Chinook salmon migrated upstream. We were able to encounter some fish in the rising river by catch and release angling. We estimated that 5,000 to 10,000 Chinook salmon had come into the river before Halloween in 2014. In early November, the river height dropped, and Recovery Project volunteer Kathy Warren relayed observations from the convergence of the Middle Fork and Main Eel at Dos Rios. She sent a beautiful photo that you could count over 300 Chinook salmon, and I traveled to Dos Rios to see if I could capture video. As I dropped into the pool at Dos Rios, I held my breath and glided past the fish as they sat in a torpor due to the cold water. This pool was at the convergence with the middle fork eel, and the fish were waiting for flows to rise so they could go upstream and spawn in that tributary.
On November 14th, I ventured to Alder Point, which is about a third of the way from Dyerville to Dos Rios, to see if there were Chinook salmon holding there too. I thought maybe the entire river was loaded up. As I dove into a deep pool, there were hundreds of fish holding, but they were Sacramento pike minnow, some of them very large. This was odd, since there were very few pike minnow there in, in the previous summer, but it was a definite sign that the second pulse of 2014-2015 Chinook salmon was weak. Recovery Project volunteers joined Humboldt Rebel Company Natural Resource Staff on November 19th, a day before a major storm event in pools between Dyerville and Scotia, and we counted a total of 990 Chinook salmon, or about a quarter of those found in the same reach in 2012. And most of the fish were concentrated in the pool at Dyerville. Late November rains allowed migration upstream to spawning beds, including into Bull Creek and Humboldt Redwood State Park. Spawning continued there through mid-January. Tributary spawners come late in the season after watersheds are saturated and base flows get high enough so that reds won't be exposed after spawning. The female in this video is bright silver and just a few days from the ocean on Christmas Eve Day 2014. A survey of Lower Eel River tributary Bear Creek found no indication of Chinook salmon spawning on New Year's Eve Day. Sediment oversupply was evident, and potential for bedload movement would present a problem for salmon egg and alevin survival. Surveys by residents of Salmon Creek near Miranda found almost no salmon spawning in 2014 and 2015 in reaches where they'd formerly been abundant. While main river reaches are in recovery in a widespread area of the Eel River Basin, some tributaries are showing signs of ecological stress and degraded salmon productivity. Salmon eggs take 30 days to hatch under normal water temperature conditions in the Eel River, and silk can smother or kill them. Sack fry or alevin need to spend another 30 days growing and absorbing their yolk sac before emerging as fry, and they too may be killed by fine sediment or bed load movement. Tomkai Creek, just below the Potter Valley Project, is an upper Eel River Basin tributary and also has major problems with sediment oversupply. In the mid-1980s, this creek produced 3,500 to 5,000 Chinook salmon annually, but in recent years it produces dozens or hundreds in years when there's tens of thousands of salmon in the basin. The total 2014-2015 salmon population estimate from the recovery project was 12,500 to 20,000 fish, a declining trend that would continue into 2015. Rain was anticipated in the fall of 2015, associated with El Nino conditions in the ocean, but the rains failed to materialize, and no Chinook salmon passage in August and early September was possible. Rain in mid-September pushed flows to 100 CFS at Scotia, and Chinook were at least able to move upstream above Fern Bridge and into the 12th Street Pool. The flows had been insufficient to flush algae, so no dives were possible. Instead, estimates of the number of holding fish were made by standing up on kayaks or paddle boards. Extremely high tides on October 22nd and 23rd drew a new and larger wave of Chinook salmon upstream into shallow pools. Eric Stockwell began noticing Chinook salmon sitting completely still in shallow edge waters or on the bottom of the pool and in the algae, and he was able to photo document their condition without diving. The salmon were going blind. When I joined Eric on a float of the Warswick pool, a blind Chinook salmon swam into my kayak. The California Department of Fish and Game requested the Recovery Project's assistance, and volunteers were able to help their staff capture diseased fish. Specimens were shipped to the University of California, Davis, where it was discovered that the eyes of the salmon were being parasitized by flatworms, and that was the cause of them going blind. After a flow increased flushed algae, a dive at the 12th Street Pool on Halloween counted 920 Chinook salmon, so the 2015-2016 run was starting slowly. 
Sparse rains on November 9th triggered a slight rise and the Chinook salmon began running upstream in almost no water. They began spawning immediately everywhere below Dyerville in locations where activity had also taken place in 2013-2014. Eric Stockwell and David Sop just did eight surveys of the Lower Eel River from November 11th to December 1, and they mapped the number and location of reds, live fish, and carcasses. Unfortunately, the recovery project also noted a recurring problem with people driving through the river and over salmon nests. Since the salmon choose riffle areas, and those are the shallow areas where vehicles can cross, this is a very significant problem in low flow years in the lower eel. We also documented systematic poaching at a significant scale during low water conditions. A map was developed for our 2015-2016 report showing where fish spawned, but also where problems were evident with poaching or driving through reds. Prior to December 1, fish had little water to migrate, but a few Chinook salmon had pushed up the South Fork to below Leggett. Volunteer Mickey Bailey photographed this unlucky female Chinook salmon half eaten by a bear on the main eel just upstream of the mouth of Woodman Creek. Few fish spawned in the Upper Eel River, with the first fish passing Van Artsdale Dam on December 5th, and only 102 fish total entering the Potter Valley Project in 2015-2016. High flows after December 1 made assessment challenging, so we used a conservative estimate for the latter part of the 2015-2016 Fall Chinook run. The 2015-2016 run was relatively weak, with only 10 to 15,000 Chinook salmon spawning, and the health of the run was challenged in the earlier part of the season. Late winter flows allowed dispersal, but may have caused red scour for those fish that spawn in the main channel down low. We approached the 2016-2017 assessment with anticipation since ocean productivity had returned to normal and there was very little commercial and salmon sport fishing allowed there. Unfortunately, flows were once again so low that adult Chinook could not enter pools upstream of Fernbridge until early October. No dives were possible, but hundreds of fall Chinook were counted from paddle boards and kayaks late in the first week in October. Drone photos also helped us to estimate that there were two to 3,000 Chinook salmon in the early run before October 15 in 2016-2017 when rains began. Chinook had enough flow to move, but no early spawning activity was noted. Fish wanted to spawn in upstream areas in 2016, possibly sensing the real best winter rain to come. As flows dropped around November 10th, anglers began to hook up a run of fresh Chinook salmon, and they relayed information to the recovery project, and we began to track the fish as they moved throughout the basin. While spawning in the upper main eel at Hearst was light, and few fish passed Van Artsdale Dam, tributary spawning in many sub-basins was heating up. Volunteer Bob Basser on Lower Ten Mile Creek reported spawners everywhere on his property, some of the highest numbers he'd ever seen. Upstream at the Black Oak Ranch, I found active spawning and decided to see if I could get some video. As I came up from downstream into the red area on Ten Mile Creek, the spawning Chinook didn't notice me. The 15-pound male next to me wanted to join the female in the red in front of me, but a giant male is not about to let that happen. Using his huge body, he drives the smaller male back and then whips him in the face with his tail. After the huge male salmon comes within about a foot of my face, a smaller Chinook moved up and actually started to hit me in the face with his tail to try to get traction and move up into the nest. Spectacular to watch worth the discomfort.
on the Van Dusen River, Sal Steinberg and the students from Bridgeville School had salmon spawn at their feet in Grizzly Creek, just up from the mouth of the Van Dusen on December 2nd. Two dozen Chinook salmon jousted and built nests below the Highway 36 bridge as students watched. This reach of Lower Grizzly Creek had been buried in debris following the January 1997 storm and previous logging, and it was heartening to see the recovery as evidenced by Chinook spawning. Spawning was active in the headwaters of Outlet Creek. Bechtel, Broadus, Mill, and Willits Creeks are productive Outlet Creek headwater tributaries for salmon spawning, and they were active there for more than a month in the 2016-2017 season, indicating at least two waves of fish. On the Middle Fork Eel River, and in its major tributaries, the Black Butte, spawning was active for a month and a half. An early December volunteer survey had luck in locating spawning fish. When we surveyed Williams Creek, a major tributary of the Middle Fork Eel River, I captured this video of a pair of Chinook over a red, but didn't have a wetsuit or a mask and snorkel. So I lay on the gravel bar and shot this video with the camera immersed. The water temperature was a chilly 42 degrees, so they were waiting to spawn. Continuing angling success extended into mid-December, and fresh Chinook were still being hooked into January, showing the diversity of run timing and indicating a very strong 2016-2017 late salmon component. The 2016 water year had the highest rainfall totals in 100 years, and high flows may have actually caused problems for salmon reds in some basins as scour can occur especially in those watersheds that are intensively developed. In Redwood Creek, problems with high sediment load and increased peak flow were apparent on February 9th, and these conditions would make salmon egg and alum survival low. Salmon Creek was also exhibiting similar elevated peak flows on the same day that would trigger bed load movement, which is tied to low salmon returns in the subbasin. The 2016-2017 Fall Chinook Salmon Run benefited from high flows that allowed Chinook passage to headwaters throughout the watershed, and there was an estimated 15 to 30,000 fish that returned to spawn, or roughly double the previous year's total. The 2017-2018 Chinook Salmon Run was projected to be good given the fact that the previous year it showed an increasing trend, ocean productivity was good, and ocean fisheries were still limited, so hopes were high. But once again, there was insufficient flow to flush algae and allow fish passage. Sustained high flows in 2016 had caused beneficial bed scour and rejuvenation in tributaries and upper river reaches throughout the watershed, but the lower Eel River was filling in. Riffles just inches deep and sometimes more than 100 yards long posed the worst threat for early run Chinook salmon stranding since the Eel River Recovery Project began monitoring in 2012. Even if fish were able to get upstream of Fernbridge, they faced more stress as all the pools except the 12th Street had filled to less than six feet in depth and had shrunk considerably in size. Chinook salmon migration upstream of Fernbridge wasn't possible until October 7th in 2017, a month and a half later than their historic date of entry. The recovery project is concerned that this valuable early run fall Chinook component is dwindling due to significant selective pressure caused by very poor lower Eel River pool habitat. Despite low flows, some Chinook pushed up with high tides and Jason Hartwick flew a drone over the Drake pool to see how many fish were holding. That morning there were several dozen Chinook but also a small green sturgeon. Light rain and a slight river rise in the third week in October allowed more Chinook to migrate out of the estuary, but the early run still appeared light. 
A dive team counted 500 Chinook salmon on October 31st, and there was an additional 1,000 fish downstream in pools counted from kayaks on the same day. Chinook began to run with rains that fell throughout November. The upper South Fork loaded up with fish. With spawning activity in the main South Fork upstream of Leggett. And also in the tributaries like Rattlesnake Creek where Eel River Recovery Project volunteer Corey Foster reported two pulses of migration in November. But very little Chinook saw them in spawning afterward. Ten Mile Creek got enough flow for Chinook to reach headwater tributary Cotto Creek in late November. But spawner densities, again, were not high, and there wasn't sufficient flow for late Chinook to enter. The Middle Fork Eel River had plenty of flow in November, and the Chinook run was strong. Middle Fork Eel River spawning gravels have recovered from past floods and offer many miles of optimal spawning habitat for Chinook. Its little-known tributary, the Black Butte, has an additional 40 miles of spawning habitat, and fish were documented migrating and spawning throughout November. Middle Fork tributary Williams Creek also had Chinook, as reported by Recovery Project board member Ernie Merrifield, and it too has optimal spawning habitat. Chinook spawned throughout the Van Dusen River watershed in November, but flows were insufficient for December fish. Reports from Jaeger Creek, a large Van Dusen River tributary on Humboldt Rebel Company land, indicated a strong run of Chinook salmon. Habitat conditions are in recovery in headwater tributaries of Jaeger Creek, and California Department of Fish and Wildlife documented widespread spawning throughout November and into early January. Recovery Project Fall Chinook Coordinator Eric Stockwell went along on surveys and helped document coho spawning in the same area in January 2018. Eric's surveillance of Bull Creek tributaries discovered Chinook salmon spawning in November, which is earlier than usual, but then rains failed in December, and there was very little spawning in December and January, which are usually the peak spawn timing. Upper Main Eel River returns in 2017-2018 were weak, with PG&E index reaches showing low spawner densities and Recovery Project volunteers reporting disappointingly low spawning activity at Hearst and Emmendahl. Early rain provided ample flow for fish passage at Cape Horn Dam at the bottom of the Potter Valley project, but the Van Arsdale Fish Station counted only 231 Chinook salmon entering for the entire 2017-2018 spawning season. Tomkai Creek had fewer than 50 Chinook salmon spawners in 2017-18 and only two dozen reds according to PG&E surveys, down from 3,000 to 5,000 fish from 1985 to 1988. Mendocino County Recovery Project volunteers were able to find only five carcasses in Outlet Creek surveys. Tributaries above Willits, like Bechtel, Broadus, Mill, and Willits had few fish sighted and almost no spawning activity reported despite good flow conditions in the Thanksgiving window, which is normally their peak period of activity. The signs of sediment oversupply were very apparent at the mouth of Outlet Creek, where Outlet Creek often turned the upper main eel brown as a result of high sediment loads. Chinook may be avoiding Outlet Creek as they sense that if they enter and spawn there, the chances of their egg survival may be very low. A late December Chinook salmon spawning survey found excessive fine sediment in Outlet Creek to where formerly productive spawning gravels were buried with new deposits of fine sediment. During the prolonged period of no rain in December 17, there was no evidence of high numbers of late run fall Chinook with only sporadic sightings of holding fish and small groups of spawners. The 2017-2018 run was down from the previous year because of the week later portion of the run and was estimated to be between 15,000 and 22,500 Chinook salmon. Overall, Eel River Chinook salmon populations since 2012 have ranged from 10 to 50,000 fish a level similar to those measured from 1955 to 1958 by the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. This is well above the risk of imminent extinction or loss or potential loss of genetic diversity. When the whole of the Eel River Basin is considered, much of the watershed is in recovery, as indicated by the green annotation on this map. However, 
The areas highlighted in red appear to be losing their ability to produce Chinook salmon, and so therefore efforts should be made to restore habitat conditions. In order to help Pacific Salmon Habitat and the Eel River ecosystem recover, we'll continue to work with watershed residents to conserve water, to abate water pollution, and to control erosion. Check out eelriverrecovery.org online to see videos and to access resources about regenerative farming techniques that you can apply on your farm or even in your backyard. We will also be promoting an Eel River Salmon Parkway project to improve Chinook salmon holding habitat and fish passage and to promote recreation on the lower eel. We want to encourage use of bioengineering where strategic amounts of large rock and large quantities of living willow would be used to prevent loss of valuable agricultural land, protect the approach to fern bridge, and scour deeper pools where salmon can safely hold. Bioengineering was used successfully to stop bluff erosion in the lower Mad River, and a similar project is needed at the Warswick Pool above Fernbridge. The Eel River Salmon Parkway envisions a trail along the North Coast Railroad Authority right away from Fernbridge to the mouth of the Van Dusen River that would allow the community to connect with the salmon as they walk in the beautiful Eel River riparian zone. This route coincides with Senator McGuire's Great Redwood Trail route and could lead to improved community health, quality of life, and economic development as people come visit to walk or get on a bike next to the beautiful Eel River. Check out eelriverrecovery.org online and follow us on Facebook to learn more.